You don't have any time? Illustrations by me. So if you don't have a lot of time to do some art, I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to do here. I would usually do those where I do the wash in the background that I put the darker colored uh, watercolor over the top and then I put the white lines on it, but I didn't do that. I was going to, but I didn't do that. You'll see. This is one of the quickest things you can do. The, the longest part of this is the drying time with the background before you put the foreground on. That's the longest part of it. Really, if you have just a couple of minutes, you can do the wash, come back to it the next day, put a couple of lines on it, and then just highlight it. I use something completely different that I haven't used yet and I tried using that and it worked wonderfully well so let's get into that okay so this is a very quick video because this is a very quick piece it wasn't really as difficult as I thought it was going to be I was going to do I mean I was not that I thought it was going to be difficult I just thought it was going to be a longer process but then I just started to put in some of the background and then I was like hey look I got these markers over here that I've never used or barely ever use. It's the Posca markers, but it's the metallic version set. I put them on there and I think it looked okay and I didn't put any white in there. I just used that instead. It looked kind of neat. It shines on the page. I'll tilt it back and forth. I think that's pretty cool. So I will definitely, uh, this is all about, you know, when you do something like this, it's about control. It's about having control because you have a pen it's not ink, I mean, it's not, it's not watercolor. Watercolor is harder to control, but when you draw things in with marker and with pens, it's just easier to control. You don't have to leave it so much up to chance and where the water moves it and what happens in the end, which I also like. So I'm not knocking that. I also like doing that. I also enjoy it. But this brought something very specific to mind. So I was having a conversation with someone and I remembered this instance about power and control. And that's what spurred this whole thing. So I was just, I remember this one instance that changed my entire perception of reality when I was a kid. Now, there are a lot of times in your life when this happens, you don't remember them all, but they do happen because you're when you're a kid, you don't really understand a lot of things. In certain ages, that's when your brain finally latches onto certain concepts. And they happen. And this one stuck with me. It was the day, and I'd, I'd seen it before, but it never really registered. So if you're in the U.S., you remember the Smokey the Bear came on TV? Well, he happened to come on my TV, and he said, only you can prevent forest fires. And I was a dumb kid. I didn't know any better. I didn't realize he wasn't actually talking to me. So I sit back and I took that in. I was like, holy crap, I could stop forest fires. I'm like a freaking superhero over here. So later, I just happened to lose later the week or later in the day. I don't exactly remember. But anyway, I know that there was a kid in my neighborhood and I looked, I was looking out the window and he set his backyard on fire, which was wooded. And when I say backyard, we lived in condos. So... It was just behind his apartment. It was actually out his front door, but it was behind his apartment area thing. He lit it on fire. And, and I, from that day forward, I never believed the damn thing that the government told me. It was, it was a good life lesson because it, it's like everything else the government says. Sounds good, but will it ever happen? Will it, is it true? Can you believe it? And that's, I started questioning everything. Like, wait a minute. Why should I believe anything anyone else tells me either? Smokey the Bear told me I could prevent forest fires. I couldn't prevent that one. That kid lit it on fire. And, and then I learned that Smokey also talked to him on his television. But he didn't listen and he started the forest fire. So it sounds good. It sounds like, oh, you can do something. But you really can't because of people like this idiot kid who he just set his woods on fire. It's like a metaphor for life. You know, you just, should I, do I really have the power to control that? Probably not. Whatever it is, so you can try, you do your best to be the best person you can, but do you really have control over that situation? Probably not. You, you can try to stop things from happening or be the best person you can be, but it, sometimes it doesn't matter. People are the, who they are. 
and they set forest fires. So Now, speaking of fire, this is another subject that I don't understand. People do, and I, I get that people do them and it helps them. I'm not debating that at all. I, if that's what you do, wonderful. I just don't understand it for myself. When people say they do like warm-up drawings, that's or they do like warm-up exercises before they draw, that I, I don't understand how that works because maybe it's not for me. Maybe it's not for my style of art, but my hand only writes for so long and then it cramps up. So I want to make sure I'm drawing or, or doing something for the longest period of time I can. I go right into drawing something. I don't understand how you start drawing like 150 circles before you start actually drawing what you're going to be drawing and then that's supposed to help you. By that time, my hand would be cramped up. I wouldn't be able to draw anything. So I don't get it. It doesn't really work. Maybe it just doesn't work for my style. Maybe if you do something more realistic, maybe that's something that works for you. But here's what I would like you to do. Please, in the comments below, tell me what you do to warm up to for drawing. Because for me, the whole drawing is the warm up. I start just drawing a line. And if I like the line, I do it more. And if I don't like the line, I do something else. I don't understand how that works. I don't understand how the warm-up thing works. I'm sure I am absolutely 100% positive that I am misunderstanding this, that I don't understand it the right way, that I don't get it. It doesn't apply to me for some reason. Because I know so many people talk about it. They do the warm-up thing. You start, I mean, that's you look at any top YouTube tips not that that makes anything right because those people are usually it's usually not right it's just they're just repeating what they heard somewhere but anyway it's on almost every video from every artist that i do respect and they say the same thing you should start drawing with a little warm-up exercise and some of the examples that they give me i'm thinking well that's it you're done that is your drawing you're you're i don't understand what you're talking about if i go out into to the world to sketch or if I sit down to create something, I don't understand, just, I, I, I don't get it. And maybe that's my problem. I just don't get it. I don't understand it. So please help me understand this. I would like you to let me know down below in the comments, what is a warm up for a drawing? What do you do? How does it help you? And maybe you can shed some light on that for me because I'm trying to be very honest about this. I just don't get it. I'm not sure how that works. Okay, so the last thing I'd like to talk about, I'd like to end with an irritation, if you wouldn't mind. Just, just something that irritates me a little bit. And, you know, at the end of last year, there were all these YouTubers who posted, like, the stupid clickbait titles, like... Oh, this is it for me. I'm leaving. I'm done. It's over. And everyone was, everyone, if you just look at the titles, everyone was quitting YouTube. It was just, that's what they were doing. That's not what they were doing at all. They were just clickbait so that you could go watch their video. And then they posted, oh, this is the last one of the year. And then I'll be back in next week, which will be next year. So this, that whole thing just irritated the ever loving crap out of me. I, I couldn't, st I hate when people do that. I, sometimes I create clickbait titles. I know I do. I, I it, it's not applying. I, I it, don't, don't worry about that. It doesn't apply to me because of, I'm not doing what everybody else is doing. I create my own clickbait. Nobody even thinks about the clickbait that I think of. But when everybody does the same thing, you obviously know something. Or when someone posts a video on April 1st, and then it's the it's you know it's something outrageous and you really okay i know that i'm going to click on this because it's so stupid but i already know it's not real it's not a real thing it's april fools day and it's not going to happen it's this whatever they say is false just don't believe anything anyone posts on april 1st i'm not a big practical joke person i don't really like practical jokes I think they're stupid. Most of the time, I, there's a lot of things I think are stupid, though. Like when, when people post videos of people getting hurt, I never laugh at that. I think how big of a jack wagon do you have to be 
to laugh at someone who just fell down a flight of stairs. Why is that funny? Someone goes to like jump on a table and they slide off and fall off a cliff. That's not funny in any way. I would never think that that was a funny thing. If I was there, I wouldn't laugh. I think people who laugh may have slightly... They have issues. The I, I don't understand. They have no sympathy, no empathy. They can't understand how anybody would be hurt in that situation. Or they just don't care. Maybe they're sociopaths or maybe they're psychopaths. Who even knows anymore? But I just, I hate when I see that stuff. People are like, oh, look, see how funny this is? And it's like, a, like especially when... When you have animals that, like, fall on the ice, you know they're hurting themselves. Because most dogs, when they get older, they have hip problems. Almost every dog I've ever seen, when they get older, they have a little bit of hip problems. And you see an older dog who goes to walk out on the ice and they fall and they twist their body in a weird way. And you're like, oh my gosh, I know that that hurt. I know it did. And there's people hysterically laughing at that. I think those people should go take a walk on the ice. And then that dog should push them down. But they just... I don't like when people do that. I'm not a big jokester person when someone scares people. A lot of people love to watch other people be scared. And I don't understand that either because that has to be some kind of sociopath. You can't think... Like, you can't find joy in other people's misery. If that's what you find... There's, you have to question some things about yourself then. Because you should not question how... how Isn't that hysterical? Meanwhile, the person... You could have taken a couple of years off their life with their adrenaline pumping and their hearts pounding out of their throat. and It's not a good thing to do to someone. You don't want that kind of response from someone. That's that flight or fight thing. And if they do end up fighting instead of flighting, you really don't want to see that you ever see those videos where someone pops up and someone punches them square in the face they deserved it i'm not saying anyone should do that but they definitely deserved it you shouldn't find joy in people's misery that's a terrible thing to do i just i don't understand it and that's that's my rant for today i just wanted to bring that up and let you know that that's how i feel about those things let me know how you feel about those things do you like to see animals get hurt do you like to see people get hurt and hit by cars and they're roller skating and all of a sudden like a truck comes by and hits like why would i don't understand why that's funny i don't think that's funny at all it's like i don't understand oh and they always say like oh these are fails fail videos they're not fail they're the person hurt themselves they didn't fail they got hurt I understand it was a failed attempt to do something and that and they got hurt while they were attempting to do something but still have some kind of sympathy for your fellow human being not oh look at that person went to go you know slam a basketball and instead when they jumped up they slammed their head on the net and they fell down on their neck and now they can't move isn't that so funny that's hysterical no it's not funny it's not hysterical you have to be you have to be something weird something's wrong with your brain if you think that's funny all right so thumbs up the video if you laugh at me when i draw these things because i basically i fail at them and that's okay you can laugh at that you can laugh at my failed drawing attempts that's different that's i'm i'm cuz i'm not miserable about it i love doing it anyway even if i fail at it so you're not technically doing anything wrong and i'm okay with that so all right, that's about it for me. I'm going to go. I'll see you in the next one.